On today's show, Volkswagen announces a new battery partnership to help it achieve those massive plug-in car production goals. Tesla outsells all other electric cars in Europe just one month after it goes on sale there. And the Tesla referral program is back. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Roundup show covering everything that's new and cool in the world of clean cars. I'm Nikki and I've got some great stories to share today. So thanks for joining me. A Volkswagen AG, along with Swedish battery manufacturer North Volt, as well as a few other partners in the European auto industry, have officially formed the European Battery Union. Its goal? To accelerate research and development of electric vehicle batteries in Europe. The group plans to cover every aspect of electric vehicle batteries, from raw materials through to production, new chemistry development and recycling. Research will commence at the start of 2020, with research due to be shared across all partners in the EU. Faraday Future has continued its death spiral this week, selling its Gardena, California headquarters to a real estate company and then signing a leaseback agreement in the process. At the same time, it's reportedly scrabbling around for cash to restart the FF91 production at exactly the same time as Evergrande Health, the investment firm that Faraday Future got into a messy court case with, is readying an electric car of its own for market production this June. That vehicle is unlikely to be the FF91. As we rapidly approach the end of the first quarter this year, Tesla is yet again putting the pressure on its staff to deliver as many cars as possible in order to ensure its end of quarter financials are as healthy as possible. Business Insider reports that Elon Musk sent an email to all Tesla employees on Thursday afternoon this week, telling them that car deliveries will now be the top priority of every single employee until the end of the month. The email calls this push the, quote, biggest wave in Tesla's history and notes that it, quote, won't be repeated in subsequent quarters. Ford officially announced an investment of $900 million this week in its southeastern Michigan manufacturing facilities in order to bring plug-in cars to market. While Ford's first long-range production electric car, an all-electric Mustang-inspired SUV, will begin production at one of Ford's Mexican production facilities next year, ahead of a 2021 launch, Ford says the first all-electric US-made long-range electric car will roll off the production lines at Flat Rock, Michigan in 2023. In total, more than 900 jobs will be created and, says Ford, will focus on autonomous and electric vehicles. Nikola Motors has just announced the purchase of a brand new production facility at Coldidge, Arizona, where it will produce the Nikola 1 and Nikola 2 hydrogen fuel cell trucks. Nikola says the 400-acre site will be home to its main production facilities and will bring around 2,000 jobs to the area in the next five years. The announcement comes just about a month ahead of Nikola's own showcase event in Arizona for members of the trucking industry and the press, which it's calling Nikola World. Back in February, Tesla began deliveries of the Model 3 in Europe, working through its order books and wait lists just as it did in North America when Model 3 was launched there. Despite it being its first month on sale, however, the Tesla Model 3 enjoyed a total of 3,724 registrations during February, pushing it ahead of the Renault Zoe, about 3,000 registrations, and the Nissan Leaf, about 2,700 registrations for the same period. As for March, well, registrations are already well above this figure, at least so say the folks I've talked to. Amnesty International used the Nordic Electric Vehicle Summit in Oslo this week to call on automakers to clean up their act when it comes to electric vehicle batteries. Right now, it says battery production has a pretty heavy carbon footprint that's not particularly good for the planet, and many companies use cobalt mined using child labor or violation of other human rights. It wants automakers to become more accountable for the supply chain and the emissions that are incurred when making battery packs. 
That said, many automakers, including Tesla, Volkswagen, BMW and others, are now doing everything they can to ensure that they source ethical materials and make batteries with zero carbon emissions. BMW announced this week as part of its annual accounts press conference that it will be bringing 12 new electric models to market by 2025. These include, it says, an all-electric Mini, the i4 sedan, the iX3 and iNext, as well as some other models it hasn't yet announced. In addition, it says 13 new plug-in hybrids will hit the market in the same time, most of which will be plug-in hybrid variants of existing BMW models. It also committed to removing rare earth metals from all of its electric vehicle motors, with the first rare earthless motor due to go into production in the iX3 in 2020. Mercedes-Benz has completed the final round of winter testing on its all-new eSprinter commercial van, and it's saying that even in the cold of the Arctic, the all-electric van performs just great. It quotes a range of around 150 kilometers fully laden with 900 kilos of payload on board, and it's possible from the van's 55 kilowatt hour battery pack. It will also offer a smaller range 41 kilowatt hour battery pack, which increases total vehicle payload by another 140 kilograms, but reduces range to 115 kilometers. I should note that these figures are provisional. General Motors announced on Friday that it will invest $300 million at its Orin, Michigan production facility in order to bring a brand new electric vehicle to market. The factory, where the Bolt EV is already produced, will add an additional 400 jobs as a consequence. The new EV will be sold alongside the Bolt EV and will also be made with a Chevrolet badge. But right now, GM hasn't revealed the vehicle specs. In New Zealand, we know General Motors as Holden, and it's not clear if the electric car in question will make it here or not. As usual, though, if you'd like to see a Holden EV, make sure you reach out to your local Holden dealer and let them know. After killing its referral program because it cost just too much money to operate, Tesla has launched a slimmer referral program to allow existing customers to earn perks for getting others to buy a Tesla. And what's more, it seems to be a far fairer, more equitable system. Now, when someone uses a referral code to buy a Tesla, both they and the person whose code they've used gets 1,000 miles of free supercharging, as well as one chance per month to win either a Founders Series Model Y or a Founders Series Roadster. But once a prize has been won, they can't win it again, meaning those with massive follow accounts on social media aren't automatically more likely to benefit. Hyundai UK has announced pricing for the Nexo fuel cell sedan. And yes, I said Hyundai, not Hyundai, because, well, it's a UK story. To get your hands on one, you're looking to spend nearly £66,000 after incentives. And you've also got to deal with a far less developed fueling infrastructure than you would have if you bought a plug-in car. In related news, two Nexos joined the Modo car share service in Canada. But right now, you won't be able to buy one of your own if you're north of the 49th. And finally, Oregon-based Akimoto has been busy lately readying its three-wheeled two-seat fun utility vehicles, or FUVs, for market, producing limited numbers of its founder's series ahead of more sustained series production. And this week, it introduced a new variant to the family, the Deliverator, an Akimoto FUV that replaces its rear seat with a cargo box that's capable of carrying up to 350 pounds of weight. Alkimoto will sell the Deliverator in the US for the equivalent of around 30,000 Kiwi dollars, and production will be due to begin next year. It's not clear if it will make it to New Zealand, however. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You can tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, then send it our way. We love hearing your thoughts. Make sure you also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? Get your home, your business and your car, if it plugs in, running on 100% zero emission electrons. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.